With silence comes peace. With peace comes freedom. With freedom comes silence. Wise leaders always put the good of their own people and their own country first. The future does not belong to globalists. The future belongs to patriots. Welcome to Rustic Wisdom. Please consider subscribing. And if you like this video, please share it. Thanks so much. And don't forget to click that little bell thingy down there so you get notifications. Okay, later. Hello, I'm David Kerr, and you're watching Shalom World News. Here are your top stories from around the globe. The Bishop of Madison in Wisconsin has criticised a leading figure in the Black Lives Matter movement after he called for the destruction of all statues depicting Jesus Christ as white. Bishop Donald Hyen predicted that such secular iconoclasm, as he described it, will not bring peace and reconciliation to America. He was responding to comments made on Twitter by the Black Lives Matter activist Sean King. Bishop Hying urged people not to surrender their religious liberty to voices that seek to banish the public presence of Catholicism and destroy the sacramental worship of Catholics along with their belief in Jesus Christ as Saviour of the world. Mr King had said that the artistic depiction of Jesus as Caucasian constituted a form of white supremacy. In response, Bishop Hying said that because Jesus became incarnate in human form, every race, tribe and tongue can and does freely depict him as inspired by their own culture. Staying with that issue, and the president of the civil rights advocacy group, the Catholic League, says that truth matters little to those whose hearts are full of hatred. Bill Donahue was responding to the recent toppling of the statue of St. Junipero Serra in San Francisco by a group of anti-racism protesters. Mr. Donahue says the 18th century Franciscan missionary was a great friend to the native people of California, and that his only desire was to make them good Christians. This is something he added that St. Junipero had great success with, baptising as he did over 6,000 natives during his lifetime. Mr. Donahue also rejected the notion that St. Junipero eradicated native culture. He said that the saint merely modified that culture for the better by teaching native people useful new skills such as carpentry, painting and masonry. Meanwhile in Holland, a mosaic of the Black Madonna of Chesterhova in the southern city of Breda has been vandalised by, it's thought, anti-racism activists. The mosaic was created in the wake of the Second World War as a memorial to the Polish troops who liberated the city from Nazi occupation. The Black Madonna is the patroness of Poland. The replica in Breda was damaged by vandals who also daubed the letters BLM over the altar which sits in front of the image of Our Lady. BLM is an acronym for the anti-racist group Black Lives Matter. The mayor of Breda, Paul Depler, was quick to condemn the destruction as, quote, never justifiable. Experts are now coming forward with what they say is the real story behind the secret 2018 China-Vatican Accord. The truth, they say, is a willingness on the part of Pope Francis and his Vatican to help China advance global Marxism in exchange for secret payments by the communists totaling billions of dollars. Shortly after his election to the papacy, Pope Francis lifted restrictions on Cardinal Theodore McCarrick, placed on him by Pope Benedict years earlier. The restrictions were owing to his homo predation of teenagers and seminarians spanning decades. But since the restrictions were not widely known, few realized the significance of Pope Francis's action. The specific task Francis assigned McCarrick, unknown to most at the time, 
was to go to China and enter into a secret agreement which would devastate the church in China and advance worldwide Marxism. Archbishop Carlo Maria Viganò confirmed the assignment of McCarrick in his original August 2018 testimony, recounting a chance meeting between McCarrick and himself at the Pope's Santa Marta residence just three months after Francis' election. The two men crossed paths as McCarrick was preparing to leave and Viganò was walking in. From Archbishop Viganò's testimony, quote, he immediately said to me, in a tone somewhere between ambiguous and triumphant, the Pope received me yesterday, tomorrow I am going to China. And I did not immediately grasp the meaning of the encrypted message that McCarrick had communicated to me, but that would become clear to me in the days immediately following." Closed quote. Francis quickly began surrounding himself with like-minded clerics an important one being Cardinal Pietro Parolin, whom Francis appointed to the powerful position of Vatican Secretary of State just two months after sending McCarrick to China for his first visit. From his post in Rome, Parolin was able to guide and shape what would eventually become the 2018 China-Vatican Accord. Chinese Cardinal Joseph Zen of Hong Kong, who has been massively critical of the agreement, told Church Militant in an exclusive interview that Parolin is a problem. I have uh, evidence that uh, he's not a man of faith. Cardinal Zen is on record as saying the agreement is resulting in the destruction of the authentic Catholic Church in China. Parolin, for his part, portrayed the accord as a great step forward. And today, for the first time, all the bishops uh, in China are uh, in communion with uh, the Bishop of Rome, with the successor of Peter. And Pope Francis, uh, Francis uh, like uh, his immediate uh, predecessors, looks uh, with uh, particular care to the Chinese uh, people. Is a, a total sellout. Various Catholic media personalities have naively portrayed the China Vatican Accord as nothing else than Francis's great desire to be the first Pope to establish full diplomatic relations with the communist nation. But these new reports in the secular media suggest something much more sinister. On the surface, the deal appears to be a trading away of the Vatican's desire to have final approval on bishop appointments in exchange for securing full diplomatic status in the near future. There are two Catholic churches in China, one controlled by the Communist Party, known as the Catholic Patriotic Association, and the authentic Catholic Church, which is largely underground. The Communists do not have this dual church approach with any other religious group, demonstrating how dangerous to the state the Communists in Beijing view the authentic church. Dr. Francesco Galliati is founder and CEO of Policy Sonar, a Rome-based public policy institute which analyzes how political changes affect world economic markets. He tracks fortunes in zero hedge fund markets and has unearthed a disturbing connection between communist China and Pope Francis's Vatican. Galliati says there's much more to the China-Vatican Accord than merely regulating who approves bishops in China. Beijing, in an effort to advance its goal of world domination, used Italy to gain access to European Union affairs and begin to exercise influence over them. But Galliati says Italian politics are closely tied to the Vatican, and so the Chinese communists have used the Vatican to get access to Italian leaders. As the Wuhan virus outbreak showed, there is a heavy presence of Chinese nationals in northern Italy part of a large wave of Chinese immigrants working in various industries overlapping with other European businesses. Galietti has written a damning expose revealing how the Vatican has been willfully used and is complicit in the Chinese communists gaining access to Italy and by extension the rest of Europe. His book, Red Contagion, How Italy Has Become China's Trojan Horse in the West, is currently only available in Italian, but an English translation is in the works. It supports many of the same types of claims by exiled Chinese dissident billionaire Guan Wengui, who asserts that Beijing is paying off the Vatican to the tune of $2 billion a year and has every year since 2013 
to stay silent about its crimes and plans for world domination. Church Militant has confirmed with U.S. State Department officials claims by Gua that the Chinese Communists have a plan for world conquest which goes by the code BGY in English. B stands for the color blue indicating control of the internet. G stands for gold pointing to buying influence through payoffs and Y is for yellow the plan to assert control over key people through sex and seduction. Part of the master strategy also includes influencing media giants to promote Chinese messaging, something that President Trump points out with regularity. Who are you working for, China? The secret China-Vatican Accord is actually a violation of United Nations protocols which strictly forbid secret agreements between nations, which was a leading cause of multiple wars over the years. Likewise, in addition to the agreement itself, there are also codicils, addendums, which both China and the Vatican are also keeping secret. Media figures like Steve Bannon, as well as figures in the church like Archbishop Vigano and Cardinal Zen are decrying the secrecy and saying the Vatican should be fully transparent and release the entire document so the world knows exactly what's going on. Political commentator Deanna Lorraine, who ran unsuccessfully in this year's California jungle primary to unseat Nancy Pelosi, is also weighing in, tweeting that Cardinal Perelin should make known the secret agreement with Communist China, and significantly, that President Trump should launch an investigation in light of McCarrick's role in brokering the deal. All this new information coming to light, Dr. Gallietti's book and Guo's Inside Information from Beijing both point to a Francis pontificate awash in scandal, payoffs, and compromise. Additionally, it sheds further light on the many questions and concerns faithful Catholics continue to have about this pontificate regarding its support for the same goals advanced by Marxist leaders like immigration and man-made climate change. Likewise, the string of broken promises from cardinals like Sean O'Malley and Blaise Supich about the release of the McCarrick Report is now called into even greater scrutiny. Is the report being delayed or even completely lied about because of McCarrick's involvement with the China Agreement? Why has the Vatican never addressed the situation of McCarrick's involvement with a Soviet indoctrination center in St. Gallen, Switzerland in his youth? There are many unanswered questions regarding Vatican financial scandals, worldwide Marxism, the McCarrick Report, the advancement of clerical homosexuality, and the China Accord. But one common thread is running through all of them. Theodore McCarrick. Reporting from Church Milton headquarters in Detroit, Michigan, this is Michael Voris.